Welcome back, Hananiga. Honors, Algebra 2. Uh, section 6.5, today we're going to start talking about properties of logarithmic functions. So things that you can do when you have a situation with a logarithm. So you know that logarithmic functions have a base b is the inverse function of an exponential base b. Because of this relationship, it makes sense that logarithms have the same properties as exponents. Remember we talked about previously that logs are technically exponents. So what happens when you multiply? What do you do with exponents? Well, you add the exponents. So again, pulling this up here. So if you have a situation of two items that are being multiplied together, the m and the n, then you actually can split it up into two separate logarithms by adding. And that goes both ways. So if I have two logarithms that are being added together, and this is what happens more often, then you actually can combine them into one logarithm. So it goes both directions here. So if you have a one log and you want to split it into two separate logarithms, or if you have two separate logarithms with an addition side in between and want to put them as one logarithm. So the next one now, what happens if I divide? If I have two items being divided inside of a logarithm, I actually can split them up because when you divide, you subtract exponents. So I can split that up into two logarithms with a minus sign, and it's always top minus bottom. So log of the top minus log of the bottom. The other way also works, obviously. So if I have two logarithms that are being subtracted, I actually can combine them into one logarithm or condense them into one logarithm. Now, probably the most important property that we actually do. So what happens when you have a power raised to a power? You actually multiply the two powers together. So if you have a log raised to an exponent, you actually can move that exponent out in front times the log. So obviously vice versa, if you want to get that, if you have something in front and you don't want it to be in front anymore, you can actually move it as an exponent of the argument. So it does work both ways here. But these are the only three properties of logarithms that we're going to use. So if you have a multiplication, you can add two logarithmic functions. If you have division, you can subtract two logarithmic functions. And if you have a log raised to an exponent, you can multiply the exponent times the logarithmic function. So these are going to go both ways, expand and condense. So I want to break this down to as far as I can make this. So I notice I have multiplication. So I have log base 6 of 6 plus log base 6 of x plus 4. Now, one more item that I can do is because that is raised to an exponent, I can make that to 4 log base 6 of x. And this is all they're asking you to do, is they're asking you to expand it as far as it will go using the properties of exponent, using the properties of logarithms. So now I got a division question. So I can do natural log of 3x plus 5, that's the top, minus natural log of y, that's the bottom. Now this one has some, it can go further now. I have natural log of 3 plus natural log of x to the fifth, and then natural log of 3 plus 5 times natural log. That should be an ln, not a log. Natural log of x. Now, this is the top, and this is the bottom. So again, expanding a one natural log or logarithmic function into multiple logarithmic functions. Condense. Now they want me to combine them. So if I have multi somebody multiplied in front of a logarithm, I actually can raise it to that power. And because I have su subtraction, I can combine them as division. So again, condensing it into one logarithmic function. Number in front. So I can make that into an exponent. Combine these. So I'm multiplying log. 6 times 3 to the 4th power, and then log 6 times 3 to the 4th power, thing divided by 3. So that is combining it. Now, I actually can figure that out because I ultimately have a situation that um, is all numbers. So 6 times 3 to the 4th power divided by 3 would be... Sorry, pulled out a calculator here. 162. This is a big one. 
and it's not used as much anymore because ultimately you have calculators. Logs with base other than 10 or E can be written in terms of what's known as common logarithms, or using what's known as the change of base formula. This allows you to evaluate any logarithm using a calculator. Now, calculators have evolved. Okay, your calculator now, graphing calculators, the newer ones can actually do this without this formula. But I'm going to make you show your work here. Uh, on your test, you must actually show me the change of base formula. Change of base formula basically means if I have a logarithm, any base, so if I have a log with any base, it is equivalent to log of the argument divided by log of the base. So if I had log, let's say, base 7 of 3, it's the same as the log of 3 divided by the log of 7. And I will make you show this step before actually giving me the answer to that question. So please make sure that you understand that the change of base formula must be shown on the section that it's going to ask you. It's going to say, please use the, or to use the change of base formula to evaluate. All right, so let's pull out a, here's what this will look like. So log base 7 of 11 would equal log of 11 divided by log of 7. And now I'm going to pull out a calculator. I'm going to round this to four decimal places. So log of 11 divided by log of 7. Calculator. So log of 11, close the parentheses, divided by log 7. And so the answer to the question is 1.23223. So 1.2323, rounding to four decimal places. That's how I want you to do it. Now, I am going to go back to the graphing calculator to show you something because, again, graphing calculators have evolved over the years. So if I went back to the graphing calculator, instead of just doing it the way I did it, I am now going to actually go to math and arrow down and you see an A there, it says log base. Everybody see that, log base. So it will allow me to actually type in log base seven of 11. So again, graphing calculators have evolved over the years so that we don't have to necessarily use the change of base formula and you'll see that it's gonna end up being the exact same answer. But for our purposes right now, we are learning the log learning the change of base formula because again not all calculators are equipped to do it this way i can do the same thing using what's known as natural logs you don't have to change you can change a log into a natural log so it'd be the natural log of 19. so it doesn't matter if you use logs or natural logs it actually matters that you're using the same denomination. So whether you're using a natural log or whether you're using a log, it, it doesn't matter as long as, again, you're using natural log on top with natural log on the bottom. So let's go back over here and get a graphing calculator. Natural log of 19 divided by natural log of 2. So natural log 19, close the parenthesis, divided by natural log of 2. And again, this is 4.2479. 4.2479 is the correct answer. This has, again, become a little bit outdated because log base 2 of 19 actually can be done on a calculator. Now, if I go to math and arrow down to log base, I can actually come up with log base 2 of 19 and hit enter. And notice it's the exact same decimal. So the change of base formula works even if you use natural log instead of log to both top and bottom. Now this one's a pretty complicated question. They want to know is for the sound with the intensity I in watts per square meter of loudness and sound in decimals is given by the function, where I sub O is the intensity of a barely audible sound about 10 to the 12, negative 12. An artist in a recording studio turns the volume of a track so the intensity of the sound doubles. By how many decimals does this it, does the loudness increase? So now they want to double the intensity. They want to double the I. So they got we have the they want to know by how much then. So I want to know what the L of 2I is compared to the L of I is. 
So now this would be 10 log. And remember, I'm doubling the i here, so 2i over i sub o minus 10 log of i over i sub o. Alright, I'm going to take a 10 out, like a GCF. So I have log of 2i over i sub o minus log i over i sub o. Now, I don't want that 2 to be there. So because it's 2 times, right, I could break this down using my laws of rules of exponents into log of 2 plus log of i over i sub 1. I sub zero, sorry. So I. So what ends up happening, and this will not be on a test or a quiz, by the way, is these two are going to cancel each other out, leaving me with 10 log of 2. So if you are going to put that as a decimal, pulling out a calculator now, 10 times log of 2 is 3.01. So when you talk about how many decimals does the loudness actually increase, it increases by approximately 3.01 decimals. Decibels. If you take the intensity as double. Homework assignments out of the book. There are some all questions here. There's some even questions here. So please make sure you check your Google Classroom so that you can check the even questions. If you have any questions on this, please make sure you talk to your teacher and good luck.